Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Monday. It's time for a five by five. This is where I take five subjects related to magic. I spend five minutes talking about each subject and then I move on to the next subject. It's quick, it's snappy. You never know what you're going to get. And today I'm going to be talking about uh, business and getting more gigs. I've done a couple of these on the channel over the last couple of months and they've been really well received. I did one S um, SEO. I did one on how to get more gigs for free. Both of those are very well received. I try to keep away from marketing uh, much on this channel because it's something that I know a lot of people aren't interested in. But I think more people are wanting to become full-time pros, semi-pros. They're wanting to make money out of magic, whether that be as a creator or as a performer. And, and I think more people have got an interest in this. And I'm always going to spend most of my time talking about this on the Netflix. But... Um, you know, it's fun to talk about it on Magic TV sometimes as well. So today I'm going to be talking to you about how to get more gigs for free by attending Magic conventions. And I'm going to use the Blackpool Magic Convention as a specific example. But this advice will work with any convention. I'm over here in the UK and the Blackpool Magic Convention is the largest convention in the world, but definitely in the UK. Um, so I wanted to talk about Blackpool. Um, but this will work with any convention. And I know you're thinking, hang on a minute, has Craig gone nuts? Can you really get gigs? That's not why we go to a magic convention. We go for three reasons. To not shower, to get drunk, and to uh, to watch, well, to buy, to spend more money on magic than we needed to and have a bottom drawer full of crap that we're never going to use, right? That's why you go to a magic convention, hang out with your mates, get drunk, show people card tricks. But I'm telling you right now, you can generate a lot of gigs for free, by attending magic conventions. Technically, would that mean that you could write it off as a, as a business expense? I think you could. Um, uh, I definitely think you could. But uh, let me go through these five points because it's stuff that you might not have considered. Uh, and I'm not saying you spend your entire time at the Blackpool Magic Convention generating gigs and doing the advice that I give you here. But I think it's a really important thing to consider so that while you're there, you do this stuff as well as having fun. Uh, but anyway, here we go. This 5x5 five five this week is five things that you can do at the Blackpool Magic Convention that's going to help you generate more gigs for your business for free. Okay, so the first piece of advice I'm going to give you is use the uh, Blackpool Magic Convention to connect with other magicians nationwide that you can share gigs with. OK, so here's the thing. A lot of the time in magic, people look at other magicians as competitors and in a way they are, because obviously there's only so many people that want to book magicians and we're competing with other magicians. Absolutely. I totally get that. However, as somebody who grew their business through networking and business networking, I understand the importance of building relationships and I understand the importance of collaboration not competition. What do I mean by that? Well, in essence, I basically mean collaborating with people who you actually consider as competitors. So rather than competing against them, you're helping each other grow and, and, and increase their work. Here's the thing, and I've said this to a lot of people a lot of times, there is way more work out. There's enough work out there for everybody. As long as you work hard and you have a strategy in place to get it, there's enough work out there for everybody. If you're not getting gigs, it's not because there's too many people in your area. It's not because they're undercutting you. It's because you haven't sold yourself to the people in your area. They're not aware of you. They're not aware of how good you are. And um, and that's that's a fact. But what you can do if you go to a magic convention, and we're talking specifically about the Blackpool Magic Convention, is you can connect with other magicians. So let's say you're a close-up magician, for example, and you're a close-up magician in the Birmingham area. You know, why not um, connect with other close-up magicians in the Birmingham area? Uh, for a couple of different reasons. The first reason is, uh, let's say you're in Birmingham and you've got a gig on one particular day and somebody else contacts you and says, hey, I've got, I, I, you know, I need a magician. Are you available? And you go, well, no, I'm sorry. And they go, OK, no problem. And they go look somewhere else. Why about, what about, instead of saying no, you go, well, I'm not available, but I've got a friend who I work very closely with. He is available and I could pass him on to you and, and he could do the job for you instead. You know, I highly recommend him. Can I get him to give you a call or would you like me to tell you more about him? Um, what you're doing here, in essence, is you're, you're not doing it when you're, when you're available, but when you're not available, instead of giving that away to somebody else, 
you're passing that work on to somebody who you trust, somebody who you know will do a good job. Now, in return, there's a couple of different options. You could take a commission, absolutely. Or if you don't want to take a commission, you can have a reciprocal arrangement. Now, what that means is that you're giving them gigs and they're giving you gigs. In business networking, we call this giver's gain. And it's basically the concept of if I give you business, you're going to want to give me business. If I contact somebody and I say, hey, I'm going to give you work. Um, you know, let's share work with each other. If I've given three gigs to this person, they're going to want to give gigs back to me. Uh, because they can see that it's happening in, <coughs> they can see it's going in this direction as well. And they're kind of worried, well, if I don't give work to him, he might stop giving work to me. And I really like the gigs that he's giving me. I better make sure I'm passing work on to him. Now, if you do that with a couple of different people, you're going to have an influx of gigs coming to you, as well as the inquiries and the leads that you're getting in through yourself. Now, the other thing that it might mean is, let's say you get an inquiry for a multi-magician gig. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's say you get an inquiry for a multi-magician gig and you've got a client that goes, you know what, I, I've got, I need three magicians. It's a big event. I can't do it on my own. I need three magicians. Well, you can do the same thing. You can say, well, no problem. I've got a couple of uh, colleagues that can come along with me. I can supply the three magicians myself. Instead of saying, well, I can book you in for me, you're going to have to go and find another couple of people. You're making it easier for the client by arranging everything for them. They're more likely to book you if you can organize everything for them than if you're sending them off somewhere else, right? Then they might go and just book somebody else and they might have done this. So, you can uh, you can you can you can sound bigger it makes you sound bigger as a company if you go well yeah no problem you want more than one magician i can supply more than one magician the cost is this and i can have two i can have three magicians i was looking on facebook the other day and i saw my friend tom mullinger jester styles was at a gig that he'd organized and taken chris congreve and owen strickland with him owen is a perfect example of somebody who passes gigs off to people all of the time. So connecting with people in your area and organizing a gig share with them. And I know somebody's going to say, well, what happens if you don't get gigs back in the other direction? Well, if you're constantly giving gigs to somebody and they're never giving gigs back to you, you've got a couple of options. The first option is you say to them, look, it's not working. I was expecting gigs back in return. I'm going to, you know, try and speak to somebody else about an arrangement with them. Or you turn around to them and say, look, I'm going to have to start charging you commission because I'm not seeing gigs come back in this direction. And, you know, I don't think that's fair. Um, but I, I, this is a really big way of growing your business and creating more leads coming into you. And it's all about networking with people that are in your area that are magicians that you can build a relationship with. And what better place to do that than the world's largest magic convention? Now, the other thing that you can do is connect with magicians outside of your area. So let's say that you're in Birmingham, you connect with some magicians in London and you say, hey, I'm in Birmingham. I don't like going out my area. I'm getting inquiries in London. I'd like to pass them on to somebody in that area that could do them for me. And again, you can arrange the same thing. You can either have a reciprocal sharing thing because, you know, geographically, you're going to get inquiries from all over the place. That's just going to happen. Yes, you can target your marketing down to a specific, specific area, but it's not going to stop leads coming in from absolutely everywhere. So if you build up a relationship with somebody in all areas outside of you and just say, hey, when I get an air, a gig in your, or when I get an inquiry in your area, I'm going to contact you. If you're continually doing this with that person in Bristol, for example, they're going to want to do the same thing and pass work back onto you. Um, it's just the way it's going to be. So when you go into a, um, when you go into the magic convention, the Blackpool Magic Convention, Make it your mission to seek out magicians that do the same thing as you. If you're a close-up magician, seek out a close-up magician. If you're a stage magician that does like maybe touring, seek out another stage magician and build a relationship up with them and speak to them about, uh, you know, potentially sharing work with each other and getting more work. It's a fantastic way to generate more leads for your business. OK, so the second thing that I would say is connect with different uh, entertainers as well. At the Blackpool Magic Convention, you're going to see kids entertainers, you're going to see jugglers, you're going to see mime artists, you're going to see close-up magicians, you're going to see stage magicians, you're probably going to see singers as well, you know, that people have got more than one string to their bow. Um, 
and and I'm always a big believer of, of of building relationships up within business, and I'm always a big believer of passing work to each other and basically creating an army of salespeople. If I've got like thirty or forty people that I've got an arrangement with, and I'm passing work onto them, and they're all passing work to me, I've got loads of leads coming in from everywhere. But not only have I got loads of leads coming in from everywhere, I'm passing work out as well to lots of people, and I'm making myself look good to the clients. Now that works um, with 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 industry with entertainers that aren't necessarily doing the same thing as you let me ask you a question if you're a kids entertainer have you ever had an inquiry for a close-up gig and you don't do close-up i'm sure that's happened if you're a close-up magician have you ever had somebody ask you if you can do a kids party i'm sure that's happened if you're a close-up magician have you ever had somebody say will you do a stage show I'm sure that's happened. Now, what you don't want to do, if you can't do a kid's show, you don't want to offer them a kid's show and not be able to do it. If you haven't got an illusion show, you don't want to offer them an illusion show and you can't do it. So what do you do instead? Well, what you do instead is you build up a relationship with a bunch of people that are outside of your skill set and you build up a reciprocal arrangement with them as well. So, for example, you might reach out to kids entertainers in various different areas and you might say to them, hey, my name's Craig. I'm a close-up magician based in this this area but for some reason people keep asking me to do kids parties and I don't do kids parties so I'd like to pass these inquiries on to somebody now I'm assuming that you also get inquiries for stuff that aren't kids parties you know I thought we could set up some sort of reciprocal uh, reciprocal sharing thing or again just like in the first example you could offer them a, uh, a you know a percentage scheme if you book it in I'm gonna you know give me 10 percent or whatever it may be um, you're going to have people that, that there's, it's a win-win for anybody you contact. If you contact a kid's entertainer, they're not even going to look at you as competition. In essence, you're in direct competition, but don't worry about that. They're not even going to look at you as competition. So if you ring them up and you say, Hey, I'm a close-up magician. I'm looking for a kid's entertainer that I can pass work onto. Uh, I get a lot of inquiries for kids parties, but I don't do it. You're going to find that that's, uh, something that's going to generate, uh, extra inquiries for you over time and you don't need to do anything other than passing people on um, to the various people in the various areas that you've contacted um, you know or, uh, marketing and sales and gig generation is all about filling your funnel imagine you've got a funnel and 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 the idea is leads get dropped into this funnel and as they pass down through the funnel they drop off and they disappear it might be because you're too expensive or you're not available or you're out of area whatever it may be and eventually at the end pops the gigs right and there's lots of ways that you can make it sure that less uh, inquiries are vanishing and you know that'll be another video for another time but one of the strategies you can employ is by dropping as many leads as possible into that funnel because the more leads that go into that funnel the more gigs you're potentially going to get at the end so lead generation and the acquisition of leads is one of the most important things that I think that you can do within your business and don't forget if you are making money from magic it is a business and you have to treat it like a business so building relationships up with uh, with entertainers outside of magic or in an area that you don't work in is a really solid strategy to generate more leads and therefore eventually increase your conversion rate and get more bookings. Okay, I'll tell you right now that one of the things that I've found has been really useful for me in the last three years is being able to say that I'm a creator of magic as well. So if I get an inquiry, and I'm talking through my own personal website, I'm not talking about Slightly Unusual or anything like that. I'm talking when people contact me directly, and it's me that they want over and above anyone else, right? So they contact me, Craig Petty. One of the things that I found in the last two or three years that has been really useful for me from a social proof point of view is pointing out how much I've done within this industry as a creator of magic. So I can turn around to people and I can turn around to a client and say, hey, you want to book me for your conference? Absolutely. I would love to perform at your conference as well as performing magic. I can do this. I can do that. Now, let me tell you a little bit about me. I create a lot of magic. A lot of the magic you see other magicians do has been created by, by me. I'm, I've won awards when it comes to creating magic. I've consulted with various different acts on various different shows, various different TV shows. Um, you know, I've, uh, I, I can send people showreel links to various different showreels that I've done saying, hey, I released this product. It was 
the best-selling product of 2022. I've released this product. It's one of the best-selling products for 2023. It just makes me sound bigger than I actually am. It sounds impressive. So why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because it's a very cool thing to be able to say to a client that you are a creator of magic and be able to show them a showreel of you not just being a performer, but as well as being a performer, you're there as a person who's created magic that is now sold to magicians all over the world. Me sending a uh, showreel link to the video of, uh, you know, the trailer for something like Chop, um, or Keymaster will 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 be massive social proof, especially to a corporate client that understand those things. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because I would advise anybody to be a creator and be able to say that they can do that. So how do you do that? Because it's very difficult to get it. Let's say you've got this idea for this trick and it's a really good trick. It's a very difficult thing to do to get in with a Murphy's Magic or a 1914 or an Alakazam or a Penguin Magic or a Vanishing Ink. But you know what? They're all going to be at the Blackpool Magic Convention, and I'll let you, I know all, most of the conventions, and I'll let you in on a little secret. Magic companies like that, magic dealers, when they go to somewhere like the Blackpool Magic Convention, they have two goals in mind. The first goal is to sell lots of stuff and to make sure their trip's worthwhile and they're in profit. But the second and the most important point uh, is that they want to try and find new artists to sign up uh, in order to bring their magic out because you know Vanishing Ink don't just want to have stuff from Christian Grace they want to have stuff from everybody else uh, Alakazam don't just want to have stuff from me and Jamie Dawes and Chris Congreve they want to have stuff from other people um, and so th th you know you've got people like Sean Dunn from Penguin Peter and Harry Nardi from Alakazam uh, Andy and George and Josh from Vanishing Ink. You know, you've got Eric and, um, and Nick from, from Penguin. You've got um, Jack and Dee from the 1914, as well as a bunch of other companies. And they're all running around looking for their next trick that they can market. And if this is the place, if you want to, if you want to bring a trick out, if you want to be a creator of magic, if you want to have that social proof that allows you to potentially convert more leads into bookings, and you want to actually have that, one of the best places to do that and to connect with those businesses is at, uh, at places like the Blackpool Magic Convention. You've got people like Bo and Lloyd and uh, Kathy and Michelle, all from Murphy's Magic. And, and part of their job is to find artists to sign up to bring out new tricks through Murphy's Magic. So this is the place to do that. Don't just run around and get drunk for four days. No, can't use this as an opportunity to connect with those various different companies to improve your social proof. Okay, so point number four, the fourth point is just to get random business advice. A lot of people don't think about going to the Blackpool Magic Convention to get business advice, but you absolutely can. Don't forget, you've got some of the um, uh, some of the most uh, popular, some of the most booked acts in the world at the Blackpool Magic Convention, and you're sitting there in a social situation. You know, as as cool as it is to go and slide down at the Ruskin next to somebody like Shu Tawagawa and watch him manipulate thimbles for an hour and just go, oh my God, shoots, I'm never going to be as good as you. It's just as useful to sit down uh, with somebody like Rob James, who I've seen at Blackpool a couple of times, and go, okay, Rob, you were one of the busiest working professional magicians in the country at one point. You bossed the rankings. Nobody appeared on Google higher than you. Can I get some advice, please? Would it be possible to get some advice on how to do that? Um, or, or speak to people, you know, like last year we had, um, yeah, we had magicians there. What, what was that guy over from America? I can't remember. Um, I, I, Dwayne, Dwayne Hill, is it Dwayne? Um, you know, he, he gets tons of gigs according to Facebook. He's like absolutely got more gigs than he can cope with. Sit down with him. How did you do that? You know, I, I bet you, you know what? Everybody knows that I run two big companies that supply almost 20,000 gigs a year to magicians all over the UK. Everybody knows that I mentor uh, people within magic on how to get more work and how to get more gigs. Everybody knows that I put videos out about this subject all of the time, both on the Netflix and on Magic TV. How many times do you think people come up to me and say, 
hey, um, you know, I'd like to, uh, you know, I'd like to speak to you. I've not got much work at the moment and I'd like to get more work. Is there anything you can do to help me? I'd love some advice. How many times do you think that happens? Rarely. It happened a couple of years ago um, with uh, a, an incredible magician. I don't think he'd want me to name his name, so I'm not going to. But an incredible magician based up in Derbyshire um, who has become a friend. And he said, hey, I'm struggling. I'm not getting much work. Is there something you can do? And now he works with um, uh, Slightly Unusual. He works with Nonstop Kids. I mentor him to generate more gigs for his business. Um, and, and he's flying. And I'm not saying I'm the only person that's responsible for that. But I sat down with him and I had a chat with him and I talked to him and I gave him some advice. And I called him after the Backpool Magic Convention and I got him involved in my companies. Use this as an opportunity. Nobody comes up to me and asks me about business, hardly at all. But you know what? I love talking about business. People come up to me and say, hey, what do you think of my card trick? What do you think of my coin trick? Can you show me a coin trick? But I never get anybody coming up and asking me about business. But if you're struggling to get gigs, and you know what? If you're watching this video, the title of this video is how to get more work from a magic convention. If you're watching this video, then let's be honest, you're probably wanting more work. And if you are wanting more work, why would you not ask those questions? If it could potentially lead to more gigs and more business and more work, why would you not do that? Okay, so the final point um, is join the magic circle. The magic circle at Blackpool always have a stand. Now, if you're not going to the Blackpool Magic Convention and you're going to another convention, the magic circle might not be there, but there's going to be another organization that you can join. The reason I say the Blackpool Magic Convention is the magic circle are there every year and they normally give discounts at the Blackpool Magic Convention if you join the circle. Um, I think that joining the circle is a really good thing to do. First of all, you can get onto the actual website so you can be a uh, you know a nominated magician on there. So when people search for a magician, uh, you're, uh, and, and a lot of the time people do check the magic circle, you're going to be one of the members of the magic circle that they suggest that you call and your details are going to be on there. The fact that you can put on your website that you're a member of the magic circle and you can put the logo on there. Um, the fact that you can connect, you can, you, you can then join the magic circle and go to meetings either over Zoom or in person and you can speak to people there because a lot of the people at the magic circle are incredible at generating gigs. They're incredible at business. They're incredible at getting work and being able to be in the same room as them and pick their brain is, in, is amazing. Um, they're going to have, uh, uh, you know, lectures every week and some of them are going to be on business or they're going to have elements of those lectures to do with business. There might be uh, workshops on getting more gigs and using social media and stuff like that. As a member of the Magic Circle, you have access to all of that. I sit as somebody who's been in the Magic Circle, left got kicked out twice, now back in the magic circle. I've been with it, I've been without it. And I can tell you it's a fantastic resource for anybody who wants to take the business of magic seriously. And I would highly recommend anybody joining. And why wouldn't you want to join at Blackpool? Rather than spending that 100 quid buying that trick that's going to end up in your bottom drawer, go and join the magic circle and go and put that money towards a joining fee. You're probably going to get more from it. If you're wanting more work, here's the thing. If you don't do it, it's never going to work. If you do do it, it potentially could work. You know, it's it's you know it, it's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. You should join the magic circle. So there you go, guys. That's five uh, tips on how to get more work when you join. Sorry, not when you join, when you visit the Blackpool Magic Convention. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think of this, uh, this video in the comments down below. Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? I want to know. I really do. I want to know. Do you want to see more videos like this? Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. If you want to see more marketing videos and business videos, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you're serious about business, please go ahead and join the silver level of the Netrix. www.thenetrix.com. It's my online streaming platform for magicians. Thousands of courses constantly going up there and loads of VMCs and live videos and uh, the Discord and it just continues to grow and get better and get better and get better. you got to be in it to win it. Go check out the Netrix. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV.